What's up everyone, I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 Times Around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, traveling, and adventure. And today I'm going to tell you what I look at when performing a motorcycle safety inspection. And this might just save your life, so stick around. Okay, so spring is finally upon us and a lot of you will be taking your bikes out of the garage, if you haven't already. A lot of you might be buying used bikes or just jumping on a motorcycle that you aren't necessarily familiar with. And anytime I take off on a new to me motorcycle, I always check these safety items to make sure the bike is in good, roadworthy condition. It's much better to discover any potential issues while the bike is standing still. I think it's important, even if it is your motorcycle, that you reevaluate its health if it's been sitting for a while. And these things should be looked at periodically anyway. It's also important to brush up on your riding skills if it's been a while since you've ridden, but that's a different video for a different day. I know when I lived in New York and I only got to ride my bike a handful of times throughout the winter, I would always start off slow to make sure that not only was the bike running safely and smoothly, but also that my skills hadn't rusted too much either. So jumping right into the safety inspection and kind of working our way around the motorcycle, let's start with what is, in my opinion, arguably the most important item your tires. Now each piece of equipment is important in its own way, but I have had a tire malfunction at high speeds and it's not fun. I've also ridden off without checking pressure only to realize turning out of the driveway that the front tire was very very low and handling was worse than terrible. And it's better to check the pressure if it's been sitting for a while. Tires lose pressure over time and they are almost guaranteed to be low if the bike hasn't moved in a while. Uh, it's also possible that the valve stem could loosen, so take a look at that if it doesn't seem to be holding pressure. Now while you're down there, you also want to look at the tread depth, the wear marks, which are these little bubbles in the grooves that indicate a tire is at its wear limit and should be replaced. And also look at any wear in general. Take a look for cracks, foreign objects of course, and any kind of uneven wear. Also make sure you're checking pressure when the tires are cold, meaning before you ride it. That's standard practice with all tire manufacturers and basically they're accounting for air expanding as the tire heats up from movement and contact with the road surface. If you fill them up to proper pressure when they're hot, you will actually be low on pressure. Now you also want to look at the rims. Check for broken or loose spokes, which can be done with checking tone with a wrench and making sure they all sound the same. If you have mag wheels, inspect them too and check for any damage. Also look at the bearings and make sure there's grease, but it shouldn't be seeping out either. Now your wheel should have absolutely no side to side free play at all. Next we're going to check the brakes, look at the pads, are they within their wear limit, any leaking on the calipers, any damage or wear, are all the bolts tight and hoses are free of cracks and damage. Working our way up to the handlebars, you want to make sure that all fasteners are tight, which you should be looking at across the bike since we're talking about bolts, they should preferably all be tight. I have had shifter bolts come loose while riding and luckily, when I went to downshift it was still dangling there by one thread, so I didn't lose it completely and I was able to reattach it and tighten up the bolt. Bolts do have a tendency to wiggle loose from all the vibration, so you should always be looking at these. And also, at the handlebars, you want to make sure the bars are free moving, that cables aren't snagging anywhere, operation is smooth and easy. You want to check your mirrors once you're actually seated on the bike, and also double check the brake and clutch levers that they operate smoothly. They should be lubricated and should be checked for any damage, the brake pedal and shifter as well. Also check all cables for proper routing, look for wear, cracking, leaks, and damage throttle should snap back into place when released and it should twist back and forth smoothly and should not stick at any point through its range of motion. This is a good time to check all lights, uh, the high beam, the regular headlight, all your turn signals and brake lights, look for any bulbs out, look for any cracks in the lenses, make sure the headlights clean, make sure all switches are working correctly when engaged and disengaged. Go ahead and check that horn too. Uh, while we're talking electronics it's not a bad idea to check battery voltage and look to make sure that the terminals are tight not corroding. Look over all wires for damage and fraying. Look at anywhere that the wires might be rubbing against something or pinched between anything. Check all your electrical connections and especially inspect zip ties as these are definitely weak points. Okay, now that we've done all that, you want to go ahead and check all your fluid levels. Coolant should be checked on a cold motorcycle. And engine oil, on the other hand, should be checked when the engine is warmed up. Also inspect the fuel, brake fluid, and clutch fluid, and look for proper levels and any discoloration. Now go over the entire frame and look for any loose or missing bolts. This really does happen a lot, so make sure to keep an eye on it. Okay, let's move down to the final drive. Now chain should be clean, lubed, and tension should be adjusted. 
Look at sprockets too for any kind of wear. And if you have a belt drive, these should be inspected for tension, wear, and damage. Drive shafts should have good oil in them and that's pretty much it on that. And the final thing we'll check is gonna be the operation of the side stand. And if you have a center stand, then that too. And basically it should snap back into place and it should stay up once retracted should also be lubricated. This is not something you want dragging on the ground because the first left turn you make will likely pogo stick you right over the bike and it's not gonna be very fun. A lot of bikes have safety switches that won't let the bike go into gear with the side stand extended, but some do not and I think this is extremely dangerous. I think it should be standard practice at this point, but unfortunately it's not, so make sure you keep an eye on that. Okay, so that's what I look at when doing a safety inspection on any motorcycle before I jump on it and take off. Obviously this isn't necessary to do in such depth every day, but before every ride, you should at least be looking at the things that you don't want to malfunction. So it's just good to kind of go over these items whenever you're washing your bike too, or just periodically throughout the riding season. I like to wash my bike and just kind of put my hands on everything, scan everything with my eyes and just maintain a close relationship with my motorcycle. Of course, not every issue is avoidable, but why take any unnecessary or extra risk when riding around at high speeds inches from a highly abrasive surface. Better to keep an eye on these things, educate yourself, and just know what to look for. Motorcycle maintenance is hugely important, and I think it's way too often neglected, and it's a shame because your life may very well depend on it. So make sure to keep up on this and stay safe. Okay, so I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos about motorcycles, camping, traveling, and adventure. Don't forget to hit the little bell. That way you guys don't miss anything whenever I post something new. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.